Just like other blockbusters such as Mary Poppins, King Kong, Alien, The Thing, and E.T., Godzilla movies have also employed the use of animatronics. Let's look into the various Godzilla animatronics that have been made throughout history. Godzilla Origins By now, everyone has probably heard of the name Godzilla, not only fans of horror. The image of that large, mutant lizard tearing apart the city and wreaking havoc is in the minds of many. This fictional monster first appeared on screen in the 1954 Japanese film Godzilla, or Gojira. The movie was regarded as one of the great cinematic achievements, considering its visual effects and production value. Since then, Godzilla has become one of Japan's biggest cultural exports and has morphed into a worldwide pop culture icon. Dubbed the King of Monsters, it has been the feature of numerous Japanese and American movies and has been scaring viewers for decades. Bringing to life this large destructive monster is not an easy task at all. In fact, it's nothing short of an art form. It doesn't take much time for Godzilla to tear apart skyscrapers, but it does take a lot of time for Godzilla to be made. Bringing this large creature to life for the movies has involved many groups, including computer animators, VFX artists, and designers, to name a few. A huge investment of time and money, Toho, the Japanese film company, has been at the forefront of producing Godzilla suits and animatronics. Cybot Godzilla, 1984 The first animatronic on the list is called Cybot Godzilla. It was featured in 1984's The Return of Godzilla. This movie served as both a sequel and a reboot to 1954's original Godzilla film. Naturally, the animatronic was made to integrate the original look as well. Four toed, prominent fangs and ears, large fins, and a longer tail. The primary purpose of the animatronic was for close-up shots of the huge mutant lizard in the film, especially its head. It was one of Toho's first attempts to make a Godzilla animatronic. This Godzilla was made to have an even greater height so that it wouldn't be drowned out by the contemporary Tokyo skyline. Cybot Godzilla garnered a lot of publicity, even before the film's release. This was according to the plan of the film's production team. They took inspiration from the publicity gained by the huge King Kong model made for the 1976 film King Kong. Constructing such models does add to the film's brand value. The end result? The animatronic was massive, a whopping 16 feet tall and weighing 1.2 tons. Producing it cost a massive $475,000. In fact, the film was one of the most expensive movies made in Japan at the time. The Cybot's movement system was quite sophisticated and complex. It incorporated a hydraulically powered mechanical endoskeleton, which in turn was covered by a urethane skin. This skin contained 3,000 computer-operated parts which enabled it to make movements, such as moving its lips and arms and tilting its head. Moreover, the suit had a peculiar construction for its jaws. Unlike previous suits, whose lower jaws consisted of wire-operated flaps, this suit had jaws which were hinged, just like those of an actual animal. They slid back when opened. How's that for realism? Coming back to the present, the animatronic is still under the possession of the Toho Group, probably lying in one of their warehouses. It has been used for display in numerous film festivals and events, and has been maintained by Toho accordingly. The Cybot was refurbished, and used in particular for publicity events surrounding Godzilla's 40th anniversary in 1994. It was also prominently on public display in Okinawa in 1985. Furthermore, it was used as a publicity item during the marketing of 1994's Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. And not to forget the Cybot's appearance during the release of 1995's Godzilla vs. Destoroya at the Ariake Coliseum in Tokyo. The towering monster figure on display leaving many amazed and many shocked. Godzilla 1998 the next animatronic on the list is the one used in the 1998 American remake of Godzilla. This is by far one of the most controversial Godzilla movies ever made. It wasn't that simple to bring Godzilla to America though, as it was the first Zilla to be produced completely by a Hollywood studio. Hollywood execs did have to seek permission from the Toho group to make an American version of this Japanese tale. Toho was very strict on how they wanted Godzilla to look, going as far as producing a four-page memo on the exact physical requirements of the fire-breathing monster. It all did work out in the end, and the plans for the film were very ambitious. 
Unfortunately, the film wasn't received that well by critics for its writing and acting, and turned out to be somewhat of a box office failure. However, its use of animatronics was deemed revolutionary. It really was the game changer for special effects in Hollywood. The production and design team did not only resort to computer-generated imagery for the visuals, it also used a 6-scale animatronic model of Godzilla's upper body and also a 24th-scale Godzilla suit. They were designed by Patrick Tatopoulos. Veteran Disney Imagineer Bob Gurr was also involved in the design. However, it is Patrick who is the man behind Godzilla's somewhat new and refined look, as compared to older versions. He was instructed by director Roland Emmerich to make the monster agile and quick. Following this logic, Patrick thought the older Godzilla designs made it look bulkier and hence slower. So his focus was on creating a more streamlined Godzilla design who could move more swiftly. He wanted to give Godzilla a new look, but at the same time retain the spirit of the original one. A tricky balance to achieve indeed. It all started with a piece of pen and paper, moving on to a smaller model, which was finally used to make a bigger model. The final result was a remote-controlled animatronic that was a whopping 36 feet tall and weighed more than 14,000 pounds. No wonder Godzilla caused so much mayhem on the streets of Manhattan. The animatronic was integrated with a hydraulically driven skeleton to enable its bodily and facial movements. This skeleton was in turn operated by remote controls, which in turn were programmed by a computer. All in all, it took over a year to bring this gigantic monster to life. A very impressive feat, both in filmmaking and animatronics indeed. Needless to say, a lot of thought went into making this animatronic as impressive as possible. Each important body part was modeled after something. Its basic body structure was modeled after a dragon. Its arms and hands were human-like. Its face was designed like that of a crocodile, and its legs like an ostrich. There were a fair amount of close-up shots in the film, so emphasis was made on making it look as real as possible. In the end, the filmmakers did prefer to use more CGI over practical effects. As a result, out of the 185 shots featuring Godzilla in the film, two dozen of them featured the animatronic. Shin Godzilla, 2016 Moving on, the Godzilla franchise has gone through numerous remakes. One of the most prominent recent ones is 2016's Shin Godzilla from Japan. The 31st Godzilla movie made. How's that for quantity? The Godzilla in this movie was a creation of nuclear waste dumping as opposed to the other incarnations which were a product of nuclear testing. The word Shin means incarnation of God. That should give an indication of the grand nature of this particular Godzilla. As this film was made relatively recently, there was a lot of pressure on the production team to make Godzilla look as real as possible and make use of modern technology to aid that. Director Shinji Higuchi stated that he wanted to provide the most terrifying Godzilla that Japan's cutting-edge special effects movie-making can muster. The production team, led by Hideaki Anno, used a variety of techniques to bring this vision to life. These included digital effects, puppets, and last but not least, animatronics. The film received mostly positive reviews for both its storyline and its visuals, so a win-win indeed. An upper body animatronic was developed, but eventually went on to be unused in the actual filming. The directors of the film and Toho scrapped the idea of using an animatronic and instead resorted to CGI for better visual results. This was in contrast to other blockbusters such as Jurassic Park and Iron Man, which used a hybrid approach integrating both props and CGI. According to VFX supervisor Atsuki Sato, fully restoring to digital effects allowed for quicker edits and all in all, higher production value. Team director Hideaki Anno also felt that only sticking to the animatronic would allow for less agile movements, as it was operated mechanically with moving wires. CGI would also give filmmakers more freedom when it came to Godzilla's tail movement, as the animatronic tail was limited by wire movement. As a result, Shin Godzilla turned out to be the first Japanese Godzilla depicted primarily through CGI. Despite all of this, the Godzilla animatronic didn't go unnoticed. Leaked pictures of the prop circulated on the internet and received positive reception amongst fans of the franchise. A lot of people felt it would have been better if it had actually been used in the film. Now the animatronic finds its place in the Godzilla Museum in Japan, open for public viewing. There was also a Shin Godzilla statue installed in Hibiya, Japan in 2018. So the legacy of this movie definitely lives on. The Shin Godzilla version of the character became so popular and well-received that it found its way in numerous places including Universal Studios in Japan, 
and the Aqua Panorama at Canal City, Hanaka. So as you can see, Godzilla has been brought to life many times with the power of animatronics. What's your favorite one amongst our list and why? Which one do you think was the scariest? Do you want to see other similar animatronics lists? Be sure to comment below and subscribe to our channel to keep up with the world of theme parks. Interested in behind the scenes content? Be sure to check out our social linked in the description. Cheers!